grandpa watering his garden. A big gum tree in the back. And the swing. There's a car that grandma's letting us use. Another garage. And some beautiful flowers and greenhouse back there. Step out around. Got their backyard. He's looking at the tires. He's looking at the tires. You're saying there's not much tread on that. Is that a higher one? No, it's um, Graham gave it to him. Corey Jane, dearly beloved wife. John's and Sydney Rupert. And, and my grandparents on my father's side. That's a little baby's grape. I don't know whose that one is. Should we go find your brother? I don't know where. I don't know where the We're in the, well, it's just the Olverston Cemetery. Cemetery. The and that's Sally's grandparents' grave. Her father's parents. Her brother is here somewhere in an unmarked grave. We're going to try to find that. Now we're at my old school, Olverston Primary School. Joshua's on, playing on some of the equipment. So is Jessica. It's called the Flying Fox. So we went to kindergarten, right? Yeah, it's my kindergarten. Uh, there's my first grade classroom. Whoa! And quite a bit of it they've all added on, but this school had its 150th anniversary just a little while ago. Um, do it again in case I missed it! Jump! This is 35 Lovett Street, the home of Eric and Bertie Johns. It's a big bottle brush tree, the beautiful roses. Okay. We're at the lake where we get our water at. At the, um, we are at the lake where we get our water. <laughs> what are we doing, Jess? We're at the lake we get water from. And our lake is right here? Yeah. This is the house we're staying at that Uncle Graham is letting us use. But we just got far, far, far away from it. Far away from it. There it is. This yeah, is the house that Graham big. let us use. Yeah, we got a chick house there. And Graham planted a garden. Not a very good angle of it. Whoops, I'm bouncing around. We got this big field out in front. And we have this yeah. big round glass over here. And a piece of wood. Right there. Okay. And there's flowers growing. Okay, this is a chicken coop and the garden.
Graham planted a garden. A lot of stuff. Yeah, I think he's in the cans as a wind director direction thing. There's the chickens. Got a barbecue, there's our water tank. And of course the side of the house. Set? Pretty countryside here. We're a little bit outside of Latrobe, which is just outside of Devonport. It's nice and quiet out here. We get woken in the morning by the birds singing and the country sounds. What do we got, Jess? Yeah, you got my nose. What is it, Jess? It's a wombat. It's cute. He bit me. He bit you? He bit me. You bugger? Oh, I just missed him hopping, darn it. There he goes. Okay, can we pet him? Josh is scaring him, honey. He's going to run up to you like that. He's going to run away. Back in there. In the shadow of them. Can't see him very well there. If you fall in, the devils will eat you. Too animated at the moment. They eat meat and they'll bite you. Hey, 
Can we find my? Yeah, I got that on tape. Missed that. I don't think they're hungry, guys. Yeah. There's people down through there, too. See the baby Joey in the pouch? Jessica. What? Look, that one's got a baby Joey in the pouch in front of her. Look. I don't know if she'll let you. Go very gently and quietly. Did she pet him? Yeah. They're stocking the wallabies. That one's as big as her.
Jesse, I think this one wants some. Where's Shush going? Jesse's made some friends. Josh, these two here really want, they've been eating a lot from Jeff. Like the ones that are on crab creatures, huh? Mm -hmm. They're on what? On crab creatures. Oh. Yeah. Just trying to get one, but they keep running away from him. I can't get to him because I think that they're all kind of hungry. He wants his own, one? Mom. Pardon? Look at that one. Two seconds, I'm getting the Joey here. I love that one over there. Oh, off she goes. That top away. Which one? Uh, I don't want that top away from there. And this way? Pretty up here, isn't it? it looks, I can't see much of the trees. You're scaring her, honey. I was trying to feed her. I know, but she's got a baby and she's pretty protective right now. Maybe I don't. Maybe I need her nose. Okay. Let's go over here. Let's cover it off. Okay, you see a foot sticking out. There it is. But no, nothing else. Just a foot.
It's a baby koala. Not very active. They weren't able to eat their way here, the way they travel, 18 to 20 hours of their day just sleeping, 5 to 6 hours eating. It did exist between Tasmania. You'll find that if I was a koala, grab onto my two thumbs there and three fingers there, digging those big claws in. That was a male koala calling out to the female. Chest, if I just prop him up here a bit, you know the other. Yes, we can. Just see the top of that. Yeah, we we'll start for a second there. That's good. Yeah, look at those claws. <laughs> Must be getting my best angle. Back that is. Hello. Now you're the centre of attention. Can you all see that scent gland, though? <laughs> we did when you lifted the lift it in the He's not letting go. <laughs> <laughs> not letting go. <laughs> well, give a rub of that seat, Glenn. It's quite powerful. You can smell it amidst the pheromones of the koala. Very Oh, sorry, that's me. <laughs> Wanna sniff? <laughs> inside there. I can't see them. They were the ones making the noise. Okay, we see any real devils in here? Where are the baby ones on this side? Where are the baby ones? Come over here. Oh, Where are some. they? On yeah. the other side. Where are they? Right through there. Jesse, hold on. Here, come here. What? What is he doing? I'm just sniffing around. For what? For people to eat? But that's still not very large. These devils are fully grown in white. They still may fill out a little as they get older. They get heavier in the rump as they get older. But scavenging in the wild, the two most keen senses they possess is their nose and their ears. Their sense of smell, their sense of hearing. Their eyesight is very, very poor. They mostly travel at night. Why are they doing? Because they're quite shy to the creatures. Seeing an animal, our size can actually run away. Mm -hmm. 
That's why the devils don't do that. They use their nose during the night. My mother was caught in a trap, which was designed, which was designed for, which was designed to catch a feral cat. My mother was caught in a trap. It had four babies, which is the maximum Tasmanian devils can hold in their pouch, and it was released. <coughs> they sure are. You find that the mother devil was released, and on being released, this little one was dropped out and left behind. Daddy, what? Where is the new tiny one? The man has him. And as soon as I start taking pictures, they stop fighting. Look at the pony of his leg. Devils tend to be a little bit more relaxed in the heat, bask in the sun. You can choose your own if you like. It's easier. Oh. 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 One last bit, who's going to be the old maid? I think we can have them all in. Oh, here he comes. These are made of the purely meat eaters. <laughs> what's been the lot design is what's been run over on the Tasmanian roads. Unfortunately, <laughs> Tasmanian devils need the fur. Otherwise, we'd go to the butchers because the Tasmanian devils need the fur. It's a necessary part of their diet, and we use only the possums around the Not protected animals. Why is that? The that way, nothing's wasted. <laughs> what is he feeding? So nothing, so we wasted. Do a fantastic job of recycling in the bush. <laughs> now one thing you'll notice about the devils is the first thing they go for is the food. Not attacking one another. We get the, the, the first thing they go for is the food. The Tasmanian devils don't attack one another. It happens the same in the wild. Some days they'll be a little bit more noisy than others. Some days they'll be a little bit more hungry than others. But the noise is just asserting their dominance because they're always going to these social feeds and travelling eight kilometres. They're not always going to see the same devils. Daddy, so what is that the meat? The Tasmanian devils don't have to travel to where the food is. The reason they're so noisy is they'll meet up with different groups of devils and they have to reassert themselves. As tough enough devil to be eating at the table. They go to a different social, social feed, a different group of devils. Again, they have to reassert themselves every time they're eating. That's why they Daddy, can be so noisy. Where is the other one? Very, very vocal. Don't know. Very little physical contact. How do you see older devils? Now. Especially a lot of facial scarring and it's going to their ears, it's out of their ears. Crunching away there. And also their flanks. Older devils have been in a lot more social feeds than young ones, and you find what happens at social feeds is there's a large carcass to feed upon. Several eight sets of jaws can fit quite nicely. Because they're such quick eaters, they down to a small piece of meat. Seven or eight jaws don't fit so well. They're all still going for the meat, but the jaws are this close when they're going for it. And that's where they pick up those bites on the face. <laughs> on the flanks, and get bites. Although they have the ability to heal up very, very quickly. As many devils also, as they get old, they become unattractive because they lose a lot of their fur. They lose a lot of their fur the way they heal up, but they don't really grow their back. This is an echidna or a spiny anteater. Okay, we're now in Deloraine. We just had lunch. We had a counter meal. And we ate it down by the river here. The kids were poking around. Now they're walking away, so there goes my big shot. It's just beautiful through here, the countryside. I have to try to get some more of the 
It's just the spillway. Some more of the countryside around here. You get a little better taste of what it's like. in Tally House. Beautiful old home and gardens. Like an English garden. And a manor style home. This is just outside of Launceston. Okay, we're now in a Tally House. One of the wealthiest landowners in Tasmania own this. This is his library. A tally house. A tally house. Beautiful house. A tally house. A tally house. This house was built in 1819. It was built before any other settlements besides Sydney were ever created in Australia. I guess Hobart. Hobart was fairly early too, wasn't it? In any of that, some of the early, earliest buildings in Australia. And the man who built it became the Archbishop of Tasmania, right? Yeah, and the then Anglican Church. Become Prime Minister. Premier. Premier, something like that. Beautiful stuff. Joshua, all right. Okay, we're upstairs now in Entally House. In a beautiful old home. There's two bedrooms and a nursery up here. This is one of the bedrooms. Both the bedrooms have the fireplace coming or the uh, chimney coming up through. It's a pretty mirror. Oh, spin you around. Here. This is the old nursery. That's messy. The children's room of a pretty dollhouse, Jesse. Isn't that nice? Look at all this mess in there. Oh, it just is. What time? Because. Why? Because why? Because why? And here is the other room. The bedpan on the bed. All pretty. Now we're out in the gardens. Zeroing in on the cockatoo up in the tree. He's up pretty high. And up above the gardens. 